Hello there, I'm Dave from Dino Bike, and today we're going to fit a Cordona quick shifter to this CBR1000 that's sitting here. This is a 2016 model. Uh, the system we're going to use is their PQ8 system, 210B if you want to look it up on our online store. It's a very universal system that fits anything from two cylinders through to four cylinders. Uh, comes with everything you need, wiring harness, its own module to drive it all and of course the uh, quick shifter strain gauge sensor. So I'm gonna just show you how to fit it. It's relatively straightforward. I haven't shown you how to remove all of the ancillaries on this bike, uh, CBR1000. It is a little bit involved, unfortunately. If you get stuck, grab a service manual and just spend a little time reading it, familiarize yourself with how to get the bodywork off it, uh, and then you can go from there. So I'm going to carry on now and start fitting this, starting with the wiring harness. Okay, so as you can see, I have exposed everything underneath the earbox. When you get all the body work off, we have got to pull everything on the earbox off so that we can get to our, let's get this rubber out of the way, our coil six, uh, four, three, two, one. Um, as with any motorcycle, we always count from the left, so just remember that's one, two, three, four. So we've got to get to these coil sticks. There is, where's the plug I've just taken off? So each one has a little two pin plug on it like that. Uh, take, we're gonna take those off and we're gonna connect our harness into the coil sticks and then we're gonna wire it into these as well. So it will loop back into these. All right, so next is our harness, obviously. Now the harness just routed along the side of the frame here, following the, the rest of this harness. I'm gonna tuck this one down in here and beside the throttle body, because it will fit in there, just. Just flatten that out a bit, and we just pop that down in there so that's fitted in there nicely. And then we've got our four wires here, so I'm going to tuck these ones underneath this rubber, this rubber cover, to get to my coil sticks. So you'll notice you've got, they're all four different lengths, so put the longest one to either the outside cylinder at four or on number one, depending on which way, which side of the bike you've got the wiring harness uh, laid out. Um, it doesn't matter, you can go put the longest one to cylinder four or the longest one to cylinder one and then you just work your way across um, plugging them all in. So I'm going to go and poke this in underneath here, pull it across, it is a little bit awkward, certainly doable. And just take your time, have a couple of beers, sit down, think about it. It is relatively straightforward. You just have to take a little bit of time. So that's my longest one. This one is going to go over to number four coil stick. So I'm going to put that one there is going to go directly onto that coil stick over there at number four. You notice we've got another end here, right? So that's going to go on to four over here. If I can get at it, just. <laughs> so I've got this end here. This end is going on to the plug that was, or would have been, on the coil stick initially. See what I mean? This has come off the coil stick. We're going to plug it in to our new harness here like this. Let me just plug it in like that. When it clicks, it's locked in there. And then just put it down there, lay it over the top of the coil there so it's not going to snag on anything or get in the way of anything. And then move to number three. So we find our next longest harness, which is, which is that one. And we do the same thing. So that one there is going to go directly onto the coil. And get past all of these hoses. This will go directly onto that coil there. Click, yes. 
and the other one. So we've got this plug here, which is coming from the main wiring harness. Again, that would have been plugged directly into the ignition coil. We're now going to hook it into our new wiring harness here at number three. Plug that in, make sure it clicks. That's clicked. Do the same with that. Oh, I've got that. I've got that going over the top of that hose now. It needs to go under. That one in there. Do the same with that. Just poke him down there. Make sure it's not going to rub on anything. On this part, there is a fan that's in close proximity to that, so we make sure the wiring doesn't get hooked up in the fan because that's not going to be a good result. <laughs> Let me move to number two and then number one and so on. Right, so moving on from that, wiring harness is connected to the coils. Now we've still sort of, little bit of, we've got to uh, route our wiring harness so that it's not crimped on anything and uh, lead it up to the back, preferably in the tail section because our little Cordona module is going to go up, sit up in here and we want our, we want our wiring harness which I've just put in here just quickly pull it out so you can have a look at it. I've just popped it in there. That sucker there, he needs to go up in there because he's going to connect to that, right? So, uh, because we're really tight on space on the CBR, they don't give us much room to move. We've very carefully cut a little bigger channel in this bit of plastic here on this tail piece so that I can actually get that in there, all right? So once that's in there, then we just want to route this along the side of the frame and sort of follow follow the OEM harness up to here you know, and lead it into here, making sure you don't want to pull on it too tight because we'll be pulling on these wires up here. We want it to have a little bit of, a little bit of movement. Anyway, that's going to go in this hole and then we're going to plug that in there. So I'll go ahead and put this back in there and plug that in. All right then, so the wiring harness is routed. We're happy with where that is. It's just gonna sit down in there, all up to the tail piece. Uh, so we've got another, you see when you get yours, there'll be, you've got two connectors, that one there, which is, that's just a two pin. And then this one here, which is a three pin. And then there is also an earth wire coming off the three pin. Right, the two pin one, don't worry about it. You don't need it, it's, it's not required. Um, so just tuck that away and forget about it. The three pin one, that bad boy there, that is going to connect to our strain gauge quick shifter when we mount that up next. And this earth wire, I can, you probably can't see it, but I can see down here where our main earthing system is screwed into the chassis down here with a whole bunch of earth wires on it. We're going to put this wire down in there and then that's done. Uh, this bike is then wired up. We just have to install the quick shifter and we're ready to go. All right, now on to the actual quick shifter sensor. So we've got our, there's a shift rod there. It's attached to the lever and attached to the gearbox shaft. First thing we do before we go cutting and mucking around with stuff, we want to measure this point here to the ground so that when we put it back together, we get it in the right spot. So I will measure that. Now, I'm going to the center of it. It's 345 mil. Write that down somewhere, because if you're like me, you're gonna forget. All right, now we've got our Cordona sensor. Um, where to put it? Well, we could put it down there at the bottom, if you wish. Or you can put it up there at the top. I normally put them up the top if it's at all possible. Um, do not put it there. That is a big no-no. We do not want it there. We want it either at the top or at the bottom. So I'm going to go and pull all this off now. There's a pivot bolt here for this one to get this off. And there's a pinch bolt there on the uh, gearbox shaft side of it. I'm going to pull all this off. And then I'll show you how to how we measure it all up and, and assemble it. Alright, so here it is laid out. I've unscrewed the ends and just laid it 
you know, beside the, the main rod. So we want to get that length correct so that we can make sure that this baby is the same. Put that there, line that up there, blah, 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 push that down to there. All right, let's just move that out of the way. So we have to cut a little bit off the end of this rod. Now there's enough thread on here to be able to do that easily and safely without you running out of thread when you go to assemble it. Um, if, for example, your particular model bike it has a very short one, then you're going to have to cut quite a lot off this rod, which means that you will need to re-tap a thread at one end. Not a big deal, but make sure you know which end has the right-hand thread, because there's a right-hand thread there, but this end has a left-hand thread. Don't go cutting the left-hand thread, because then you'll be in all sorts of bother trying to get somebody tap a left hand thread. Cut this end, right, if you've got to drill a hole you'll need to go to a machinist who can drill a hole in there and then put another thread in there. Which is something you're probably not going to be able to do at home unless you have a lathe or a milling machine of some kind so that you can get some accuracy happening. Or alternately you can buy a shorter rod if you know you're going to need a shorter rod because this is the standard system. Remember PQ8 is a universal system and there's a wide variation from makes and models. So if you know that yours is really short, then when you're ordering the PQ8, ask for a short rod, tell them what approximate length you think you need, and they can then, or we can then include it in your order. So I'm going to put that back in there, I'm going to mark that now. Then I'm going to cut the end off it and assemble it up. Okay, so I've cut the rod, I've assembled it up at this end and in the middle here, now this just has to screw on to here. This is a left hand thread. Um, another little point of note is that the thread at this end and this end is what we call a magic thread. So that will accept a left hand thread and a right hand thread as will this end here. So it's up to you to decide which way you want to go with that or which way you need to go with that. But it's very flexible in that way. And one other little point to remember is that when you screw these little six mil studs in here, right, this is not hollow all the way through, it does bottom out. We do not want that to screw in so far that it bottoms out on the inside of this shifter. That is another no-no. That will mean that the shifter will not work correctly. It will be intermittent if it works at all. So just be very careful with that. When you're putting these rods in each end of the sensor, do not screw this all the way in till it won't go any further. You screw it in all the way in, then turn it back out half a turn, turn so, there's a, so there is an air gap between the bottom of this screw and the bottom of this threaded hole here. Very important, that one. So I'm going to go ahead now and finish my assembly, put it on the bike, and then we will put the bike on the dyno and see how it works. Right, so I've just fitted that on there. It's, okay, we'll measure this, make sure I've got... Make sure I've measured that correctly. Yeah, that is spot on. If it's not spot on, we have this loose, so we can actually, you know, you can turn that, tweak that either way. Moves the gear lever up and down. So you got it where you wanted it. And then we're just gonna lock these, all of these uh, nuts away. Like so, at the bottom. Now, let's tidy this up. So this is a, this piece here allows us to adjust the sensitivity of the lever. So if you've got a heavy foot or a light foot, you can adjust this either way using, using these two little buttons here. It's all the 
uh, instructions come with the unit. Um, so we want to mount that somewhere where it's accessible so we can pull over on the side of the road and make an adjustment. So I'm going to try and fit that in there somewhere probably, somewhere around here, tidy this wiring up. This, is, this end's going to go to our three pin, three pin connector here, it's going to plug into that one there, but we'll go in, we will go in underneath, plug that in, tidy the wiring harness up, and then we will put it on the dyno and see what it goes like. Oh, come on, mate. What's going on here? These people are not going to wait around all day for you, mate. Come on. No sleeping on the job, kiddo. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, quick. Quick. Let's go, girl. Crikey. All right, then. So we're here on the dyno. We're ready to... Give this thing a test, but before I do that, uh, we need to configure the Corona sensor. This sensor is able to recognise which direction you're shifting in. So if you've got a bike with the race shift set up, then you need to tell it that that's the way you're shifting. Um, likewise, if you've got just standard shift, then you need to tell it that it is standard shift. And the way you do that is pr pretty simple. Um, using the two buttons on this little on this uh, little pod here, I'm going to turn the ignition on. I'm going to hold both of these buttons in. It will flash a number, and then it will flash up. And then at that point, we will, uh, because this bike is standard shift, we will pull up on the shift lever and hold it there for a second. Release it. Pull up again. Hold for a second. And we'll do that three times. And you'll also hear the module beep each time we do that. And then that's it. Switch, switch the ignition off. And this sensor is set for killing the engine when we shift in an upwards direction. So I'll do that right now. Okay, two buttons are in. Turn the ignition on. All right, it's now flashing up. Release that. It's flashing up, sorry, now that I've released the buttons. So I'm just going to pull up on the lever. Well, release it, pull up again. Release it, pull up again. And release it, and that's it. Turn the ignition off. It is now set to shift in standard uh, shift pad. So there you have it, there's the quick shifter from Cordona, um, hope you enjoyed that, got some value out of the installation process. Uh, just remember this system is for any motorcycle, uh, twin, triple or four cylinder with a stick coil configuration. Comes with its own wiring harness to suit, uh, whether it's an independent module, it is pretty straightforward to install and it works pretty damn well as we've seen in the video so uh, if you want to buy one you can go to our online store at dinobike.com.au click on the shop icon and then look for Cordona and then you want to select PQ8 system that's about it for me thanks for watching I'm Dave from Dino Bike.